We are assembling and installing Microtrain's body-mounted couplers on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe below and click the little bell icon so you can catch future videos. In my last video, we started talking about upgrading our rolling stock for the best possible performance on our layouts. We talked about checking for optimal weight and adjusting the weight in our cars to make them roll the best, to keep them from streamlining, and to make them perform well. We talked about using standards gauge to check things like coupler height and wheel gauge to make sure that our rolling stock is going to roll properly, it's going to couple together right and stay coupled together, and it's going to roll on our track without problems of derailment because of a faulty wheel gauge. We also talked in depth about trucks, couplers, and wheels, and we showed how to upgrade our wheels to metal wheel sets. There was one project that we had left to do, and that was to install some body-mounted couplers on some of our rolling stock. Now, body-mounted couplers are very prototypical. The real railroad cars have couplers that are mounted on the bodies. Most of our rolling stock, and in scale especially, actually has couplers that are mounted to the trucks. Now, this isn't typically a problem, and for the most part, I run my rolling stock with the truck-mounted couplers. But there are times when body-mounted couplers are important, are helpful, and are absolutely necessary. For example, sometimes very long rolling stock, like auto racks or even 79-foot center beam flat cars, can have problems when being shoved through turnouts, especially turnouts that are number sixes or smaller. Sometimes body-mounted couplers can help uh, these cars to, to shove and roll better through those tighter radii that we have going through sharper curves or going through those turnouts. Another instance when sometimes body-mounted couplers is helpful is sometimes we have trucks that have couplers that aren't compatible with the other couplers on our layout. We may not want to replace the trucks, we may not want to replace the wheel sets, but we do want to replace those incompatible couplers with some couplers that will work with the other couplers on our layout, some Microtrain's body-mounted couplers. In fact, that's exactly the project I'm going to be doing today, replacing some truck-mounted couplers on some Cotto cold porters with body-mounted Microtrain's couplers. Now, you're going to find that I purchase my Microtrain's couplers unassembled because you can save a lot of money that way. A lot of people avoid that because the very tiny, detailed parts of those unassembled couplers can be a challenge to put together. But I'm going to show you how to assemble those today with ease and also how to install them on your freight cars and other rolling stock. Here's a question for you, especially for you inscalers. Do you run body-mounted couplers on your rolling stock? Do you run it only on certain pieces of rolling stock? Or do you run body-mounted couplers on all of your rolling stock? Tell me about your experience in the comments section down below. Let's get back over to the workbench and we'll get started. Now, as we go to our Cotto car, uh, we're gonna look at a different kind of a situation. Uh, but before I work on this car, I first wanna remove this coal load just to, to get it out of the way. And then turning this car upside down, uh, I want you to notice that, uh, that first of all, this has, it, uh, you know, it has 100 ton trucks with three springs on it. And the Cottos come with metal wheel sets, which is great. They, they run great, these wheel sets do. Uh, they, they have nice flanges that are, you know, semi scale. The problem with Cottos is uh, they have uh, this kind of a dummy coupler. It's not an operating uh, knuckle coupler, it kind of resembles a knuckle coupler but the knuckle doesn't move. They're very hard to couple and uncouple uh, even from one another, and they're not at all compatible with Microtrains, Accumates, McHenry's, any of those knuckle couplers. They won't couple together. So I want to do something to change out the couplers on these. Uh, I, and again, I could just come in and completely replace the truck with Microtrains trucks, but uh, I, I hate to spend that extra money to do that when these trucks look good and the wheel sets are great. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just replace the coupler and I'm going to show you how I do that now. Now, 
our Atlas car uh, had a friction pin mounted uh, uh, truck. In this case, we have trucks that are mounted with screws. And so I've got a, a, a precision uh, screwdriver here, a Phillips head screwdriver. And I'm just going to go in and carefully remove that screw. And I want to make sure and hold on to that safely. And I'm going to do that for both of these trucks. Here's my screw. Now, set the car aside here. Um, the first thing I'm going to need to do if I'm going to replace this coupler is I need to remove this coupler from the truck. So to do that, I need to pop out at least this one wheel set. And honestly, it's easier to go ahead and pop both of the wheel sets out. And I'm going to turn my truck upside down. And this is where some people get scared. I'm going to come in and right where the coupler connects to uh, uh, to this uh, to the truck at the bolster, I am just going to cut through that with my hobby knife, and I'm basically just cutting the the uh, the coupler right off. Uh, and there's the coupler and the coupler spring, and then also there's this little pin here that is it is a uh, a spring retainer, and I need to cut that off as well um, just to get it out of the way. And then I can put my wheel sets back in place. And that truck is ready to, uh, ready to be remounted. Now, you might be asking, well, what are you going to use for a coupler? Well, in my case, I'm going to install body-mounted Microtrains couplers. And the ones I'm specifically using are part number 1015, uh, which are uh, Microtrain, uh, Microtrains uh, uh, couplers, uh, but they these are come unassembled. You can buy these assembled, but you will save yourself a lot of money if you buy the unassembled ones. Now, some people will tell you, I've tried to assemble those and they're a nightmare. It's worth the money. To, uh, to you know to pay the extra for the ones that are assembled but I'm going to show you how to assemble these very easy very easily and very quickly and once you do a few of them uh, you can pick it up uh, very very fast uh, I've got right here a piece of painters tape on which I have all of the parts I need for two microtrains couplers you're going to need a, a hobby knife for this with a number of 11 blade. It doesn't need to be a sharp blade. You just need to have a blade in it. Uh, you're also going to need a little flat screwdriver. It's going to be very handy for you. And uh, you may want a pair of tweezers. I have some tweezers here, here handy too if I need them. Um, I need a pair of needle-nose pliers is also uh, uh, a necessity for, for this job. All right, the first part, uh, first step in this process is I want to take uh, my knuckle side of my coupler, the, the, the larger side, not that has the, the, the paddle on it, but the actual knuckle. And if you look at it, it will set flat one way. If I turn it over, the knuckle sticks up, it wouldn't sit flat. You want to set it on your work surface uh, flat. And then we're going to get uh, one of our trip pins. You want to make sure that you have the long side going into the coupler. And uh, I need to turn this around again with the trip pin going pointing out towards the coupler. I'm going to push this into the hole and uh, I'm just going to allow the coupler to turn to the pin. Take care with this because if it pops out, it'll go flying. Um, but this is the easiest way I have found to do that. You can actually allow the coupler to turn in the direction it needs to so that the square hole matches the squared end of the pin and drive it right through the depth of the hole. And there is our trip pin mounted. Now with that in place, I can take the other half of my coupler and uh, and it's got a, a just a, a, a big open oval hole that just slides over that trip pin. I'm trying to do this where you can see it and it's difficult to do that because they're very small and my hands are quite big. And there is the, the parts of, uh, of my coupler itself uh, assembled. Next I want to take uh, one of the journal boxes 
and I'm going to work on the painter's tape here. I'm going to set it right there with the, the back of it. You know, it, it's easiest for me to have it working to my left. I, I'm right-handed, and of course this is the open end where the coupler itself will go. Um, and then I'm going to take my coupler, line everything up. This is where I'm going to use my tweezers. And I'm going to set it in the coupler box. And I want to put it over the, 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 that bolster pin in the middle of that bolster pin, but that coupler pin that's in the middle. And I want to make sure it's slid as far down towards the coupler uh, over that pin as it can possibly be. Because that little space between the pin and this front of this socket uh, for the, the coupler itself is where that little spring has to go. Um, and now it's time for that dreaded part, putting in the spring. Uh, and this is where I use my hobby knife. I can take my hobby knife and stick it in between a couple of the wires of the spring and pick it right up. Uh, but I want to do that. I want to be holding the, the, the spring on the end that's closest out here to the coupler. So I want to make sure that I grab it in such a way that I have that end held. And there you see I've got my spring on, uh, on my hobby knife. And now I want to get my, my little uh, screwdriver in my other hand. And first I'm going to hold that uh, coupler in place as I just insert this spring in here by pushing against that pin and pushing it down into the socket where the spring goes. And there we have it mounted. Uh, and then the only step left as far as assembling is concerned is to get our draft gear box cover and put it over the coupler and the pin. And I don't think there's any way I can get my fingers out of the way for you to see this, but you want to line the hole in this cover up over that pin and then push it down and it will snap into place. And when it does, it will hold everything together. Now that I have my couplers completely assembled and uh, I've driven the screw that comes with them just through the coupler itself just to help hold everything together, uh, a final test to make sure that your coupler uh, assembly uh, is working properly, if you hold the uh, coupler by the draft gearbox and then just flip the coupler both ways. And if it's assembled correctly, it should always flip back to center. Uh, if you put the lid on this and uh, it doesn't come back to center easily and automatically, then probably what happened is as you were putting the cover on the draft gearbox, that little spring can flip up so it sits in there vertically rather than horizontally, and it won't cause the coupler to recenter, which means you're going to need to take the, the lid of the draft gearbox off, reset the spring, and then, and then do it again. But both of mine are, are working well. So now we're ready to mount our couplers onto the body of our car. Now, to do this, I actually bought uh, from Microtrains a tap and drill set specifically for this, and I keep the bits and the tap that came along with that uh, together as a set, and I use it for nothing but body mounting couplers. If you have a good micro drill set, and if you have some micro taps, you don't have to buy those separately. Uh, I just prefer to keep a set separate just for that so I never know, I'll never lose them, I never have a broken bit because I've used it on something else. The Microtrains couplers are mounted with double aught 90 screws. And to prepare to take a double aught 90 screw, you need to drill a, a, a tap hole with a number 62 drill bit. You see in my pin vise right there, that's what I have. Uh, and then you also need a double aught non a double aught ninety tap in order to thread the hole that you're going to make. Now for these cars, uh, it's, a, it's a little tricky. A box car or other kinds of cars, you may have a solid piece of plastic across here. In this case, because of the slope sheets on these uh, coal hoppers, these these gondolas, uh, uh, coal gondolas. Um, I just have this narrow piece here, and, and I have to drill right in the center of that piece uh, in, in both directions in order to line my coupler up where I want it. So I'm going to take my drill bit in my pin vise and just put it right in the center of that piece, 
and I'm going to drill, and in this case, I have no reason not to just drill all the way through, and my screw will need to go all the way through anyway. So I'm just going to push it there. It's gone all the way through, and uh, pull it out. And I'm going to drill both holes while I'm at this. That way, whenever I put my tap in, I don't have to keep changing bits back and forth. Now, I need to take the drill bit out of my pin vise and replace it with this double aught nine double aught 90 tap and a tap literally is the tool that will cut the threads into this hole now you want to be careful to do this you don't do this quite like you drilled it you know so aggressively you want to go slowly with this and gently and allow the the tap and the pin vise to do most of the work you see i'm not putting any pressure I'm, i want to make sure i'm holding this nice and vertically uh, and I'm just going to drill it in a few turns, and then I'm going to take it back out in order to clear the threads uh, for, of any uh, plastic flash. And then gently I'm going to put it back in the hole and thread it again. And I want to do this slowly and gently until I've gotten all the way through. Again, after a few turns, I'm going to back it out. You don't want to pull it out. You want to cut threads. You don't want to rip the threads out that you've cut. So you want to screw it in and then back it out until you've gotten all the way through. And I think I am cleanly all the way through now. Uh, I'm going to back that out. And I'm going to go ahead and install this one just to um, make sure that everything is working the way I want it to. So to install it, again, I have the screw just, just set through the um, draft gear box itself. Uh, I'm going to hold it with a pair of tweezers, and I've got the wrong screwdriver. Get the nice screwdriver here, line the screw up with the hole, and then just gently, I'm going to drive it into that hole. And it's fresh thread, so I want to take my time. And I want to make this, you know, snug when I tighten it down, but I don't want to tighten it too much. I don't want to strip the threads out of that plastic, which is, uh, can be easy to do. And there is uh, one coupler mounted. Now, when I remount these trucks, I, I, I cut the, the coupler off of one side. And even though I cut it off, it's pretty clean. Just for safety's sake, I'm going to turn that around so that the end that I cut is actually towards the inside of the car. Uh, the Cotto trucks go on a little differently because the, the bolster pin actually fits up through the hole that is in the, uh, the, the truck. And then I can set the screw into its spot there. Come in with my screwdriver and just gently drive it home. Again, I check to make sure that it turns easily. It doesn't rock too much. And there we have it. And now we have that uh, Cole Porter uh, now has my Microtrains trucks and it is ready to run on the layout and will be compatible with every other car on my layout as far as coupling and uncoupling is concerned. Now, one of the questions that you may sometimes ask yourself is what happens if I make a mistake? And I have always been of the opinion that uh, you can't be afraid of making mistakes. You're going to make some along the way. The most important thing is to know how to best make up for a mistake when you make one. When I drilled out the first one of these cars, uh, I literally grabbed the wrong drill bit. And instead of drilling the, the tap hole, I drilled the clearance hole, which means it's actually too big for the screw. So uh, literally the screw just falling in and out of it. Uh, you might, you know, see an accident like that and think, oh, I've made a mistake. I've ruined the car. Well, you know, this is, is recoverable. And literally what I need to do is I need to plug those holes and I need to plug them well. And then once they are plugged, I need to re-drill them with the right size drill bit. And the way I'm going to do that is with some very small uh, styrene rod. In this case, I have some 40 thousandths styrene rod that is uh, really just the right size to, to plug these holes. And so I've cut some just little tiny scrappy pieces here as you can see that on camera and i'm just going to stick a piece of that styrene rod into that hole and um, in this case it went in basically almost all the way in this case and then i'm just going to take some uh, some solvent cement 
and put it right in there on top of it in that hole. I want capillary action to really suck it in all the way down through there. And so I'm going to put a pretty good drop in there. And uh, turn around and do the same on the other end. This piece is a little longer, so it's going to stick up. That's okay, because once I have glued it in place and the solvent cement has set up, uh, I can come back with uh, sort of sprue nippers and just nip that little extra bit off. And once it's in there, I'll make sure that it's in there straight, just like that. And now, like I said, as soon as I'm going let to that, let that cure completely, I want that to be really, really solid where I've cemented those into those holes. But once that has totally cured and I can nip off this little piece, in fact, I can go ahead and do that now. I have these nice flush cutting sprue, flush cutting sprue cutters and uh, just nip the top of it off there. And that is nice and flush. And as soon as that's set, I can re-drill these and go on just as if nothing ever happened. And honestly, if I hadn't told you on camera, if you had seen this on my layout when it's done, you'll never know the difference. And that's how you can assemble and install body-mounted couplers on your rolling stock. It's a process that's not as difficult as it might seem Certainly not as difficult as it looks with those little parts if you just follow these simple instructions. And if you do make a mistake, I hope you'll learn from my experience that mistakes are not unrecoverable. Most of them are very fixable if we just take a little time to figure out what we need to do to recover from the mistake and get to the place where we needed to be. Now, these upgrades that I've covered today and in that previous video will really help your rolling stock to perform at its very best on your model railroad layouts. If you didn't see that previous video about those other upgrades, I'll include a link to it in an end screen at the end of this video, so be sure and check that out. Well, if you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more videos I know you'll enjoy as well. Also, be sure and check out that description down below this video where you'll find a link to my Amazon page, my Amazon pick of the week, my Patreon page, as well as various social media where you can connect with me. Well, I hope you'll join me again next Tuesday as I'll be bringing you another great Model Railroad segment, and I look forward to seeing you then. Ten, Lizzie?